Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson with whoismatt.com, and this is my Kenotinic Practolite 602. I've been using this light for the past three years to light my wedding films and YouTube videos, and up until this point, the Practolite has been pretty unique with what it offers. It may look just like a compact Fresnel spotlight, but what sets it apart is that it is bicolor. You can find tons of small bicolor LED panels these days, but a compact bicolor Fresnel spotlight is very rare which is why I've loved this light. There's a new light in town though, partner, and that light is the Aperture 60X. And this X here is actually really important because it means that this light is bicolor as well. And even more interestingly, this light costs over half the price of the Practolite. Intrigued? I've been using the 60X for a bit, and today I want to review this light and compare it to the Practolite 602. Also, for the sake of ethics, I want you to know that while Aperture did send me this light, this video isn't paid or sponsored by them, and the first time that Aperture sees this video is the first time that you see it whenever I upload it to YouTube. Now, let's start off with the size. The 60X is a pretty compact spotlight, especially whenever you put it next to its bigger brother, the 120D. Comparing it to my Practolite, it's approximately a half an inch longer and about the same circumference around. On the back you have a power button, controls for brightness, color temperature, beam angle, and a screen that shows your settings and even an estimated battery life remaining if you aren't using AC power. I especially love the amount of color temperature control I get with this light. You can actually change the 60X's Kelvin values in increments of 50 for a very finely tuned control over its color. This is a nice upgrade over the Practolite that only allows you to adjust Kelvin values in increments of 100. In addition, the 60X also has a Kelvin range of 2700 to 6500K, substantially wider than the 3000 to 6000K of the Practolite. Now, another nice thing about the 60X that also applies to the Practolite is that both of these lights include the ability to wirelessly control them via Bluetooth and a phone app. You can even control multiple lights from both apps. From a usability standpoint, I have to give the edge to Kenotinic because the Practolite app gives you instant access to your light settings as soon as you open it. Unlike Aperture's Citus Link control app, which takes an extra tap to get to the settings for an individual light. I really prefer that near instant access to settings because whenever I'm filming a wedding, say the couple's first dance and they're about to start dancing and I realize that my light's brightness isn't perfect, I can whip out my phone really quickly, make a quick change, go right back to filming. Regardless though, the difference in speed for wireless control between these two lights is only a few seconds, so it's not a huge deal, and I will definitely always take a light with wireless control over one that doesn't have it. Back to the size comparison between these two lights. One way that you'll see the 60X is larger than the Practolite is this inclusion of this large yoke here that's used to mount the light to a light stand. But Aperture has also added a super cool feature to this yoke that I'm planning on using at basically every wedding that I have moving forward. Notice right here, there is a V-mount battery mount integrated into the yoke. So whenever you wanna power this light using a battery, take your V-mount battery, slide it on, plug it in, start rolling. On the other hand, to rig up my Practolite with a V-mount battery, I had to invest in a small rig V-mount plate and a ball head super clamp to DIY mount a V-mount battery to my light stand. Cool, Matt, what is that, like 35 bucks? 74 actually, but the financial savings aren't the reason that I love being able to mount my battery to this light. There is in fact another reason. And to explain it, we need to talk about water resistance, which, I promise this is related. The 60X has a sturdy metal housing with holes for ventilation. But even with these holes, Aperture says that this light is IP54 weatherproof, meaning that it is protected from splashes of water. Why am I so excited about water resistance? Does it rain a ton in Texas? Not really, but if you've watched my Practolite review, you know that one of my favorite things to do at a wedding is take the couple out in the dark when it's raining, backlight them with the Practolite, and get some really gorgeous footage of them in the rain. I've done this many times, and the Practolite has always worked with zero issues. But that said, it doesn't have any sort of official IP water resistance rating. So while nothing bad has happened yet, there's always a bit of fear in the back of my mind that the light could get too wet and break, or worse, electrocute me with with all of the substantial power of a V-mount battery, thus turning me into some sort of bearded electro supervillain. That could be cool. 
Anyways, the 60X's weatherproof rating does reassure me a bit. And I'm happy to tell you, I actually had the opportunity to test this out at a recent wedding, where we took the couple out in the rain, backlit them, and it looked glorious. Especially in 4K at 120 frames per second with my Sony a7S III, yummy. Now, speaking about backlighting the couple leads me to the next thing that I wanna talk about, batteries. And yes, the 60X comes with a power cord, but there ain't no way I'm running a power cord out in the rain to power a light. That's just more risk of electrocution there. I use V-mount batteries for power, but the 60X is also compatible with anything with a D-tap, or you can use Sony NPF batteries with the included adapter from Aperture. This light gives you a ton of power versatility. Speaking of versatility, let's talk about how compatible the 60X is with lighting modifiers. Now, right off the bat, unlike Aperture's other lights like the 120D, which used an exposed chip on board LED that required you to buy a focusing Fresnel lens attachment for an extra $120, the 60X includes a focusable lens on the front built in. This lens isn't the same as the Practolite's traditional Fresnel though. Now I haven't confirmed this with Aperture, but this lens looks very similar to the dual as spherical lens that is on the legendary Dito Light DLH4 light that Hollywood filmmakers have loved for decades. This lens is brighter than a traditional Fresnel, and I've heard many stories from filmmakers that love how Dito lights flare. All that to say, I'm definitely not upset that it looks like Aperture has adapted the Dito lights lens design for the 60X. Looking at light modifiers now, this is where the Practolite and the 60X start to diverge. The 60X comes with barn doors in the box, but also, just like all of Aperture's other COB lights, it comes standard with an adapter for the very popular Bowens mount for lighting modifiers. This is one of my favorite mounts because it is just so versatile. Aperture makes a ton of different modifiers for it, including spotlights, softboxes, lanterns, etc. But because the Bowens mount is a very popular standard, you can buy modifiers from a ton of other companies as well. This elevates the 60X above being just a wedding spotlight, and you can adapt it to be used in a wide variety of other scenarios. While the Practolite isn't a bad light in comparison, it is going to cost you more in the area of light modification. Out of the box, there is no Bowens mount or way to attach another lighting modifier other than the included barn doors. Instead, you will need to purchase Kinotinix Speed Ring Adapter for 59 bucks, which will then enable you to use the only modifier Kinotinix makes, a 20 inch softbox that retails for another $69. As far as compatibility with lighting modifiers from other brands go, Kinotinix also says the Practolite is compatible with Profoto's four inch studio headlight modifiers, meaning you can get other adapters like a Bowens mount. I haven't had a chance to purchase one of these adapters to test though. So, both of these lights are modifiable beyond their stock spotlight form, but the 60X with its included Bowens mount adapter is definitely going to save you some money over the Practolite. This talk about lighting modifiers leads us to the next thing that we need to talk about, the brightness of the 60X versus the Practolite. Because while the Practolite is great as a spotlight, its brightness level really pigeonholes it into that one role it's just not bright enough to be as versatile as a 60X. To measure the brightness of these two lights, let's do something a bit more real world than pulling out a light meter. I put barn doors on the 60X and Practolite and put both lights approximately 10 feet away from the wall. With both lights dialed into approximately the same beam angle of 45 degrees and both set to the same 5500 Kelvin white balance, I turned the Practolite 602 to its maximum 100% brightness. I then filmed the wall the Practolite was lighting with my A7 S3 and was able to achieve an exposure of 0.0, .0 on the camera center metering by setting the lens to f8 at ISO 640. I then turned off the Practolite and turned on the 60X, and with those same settings, I was able to hit the same 0.0, .0 level of exposure meeting with the 60X only set to 60% brightness. What does this tell us? The 60X is giving you approximately 40% more light output than the Practolite. This extra light output of the 60X is especially important when you want to use any sort of light modifier such as a softbox, or if you want to light someone from further away. 
As an aside, you should know that the Practolite does have a boost mode, which will increase its brightness substantially, but it locks the light to 4500 Kelvin. And more importantly, it doesn't work on battery power and is limited to the camera being plugged in. For portability and keeping people from tripping on a cord at a wedding, I highly recommend not plugging in your lights and using batteries instead. Now, looking at the back of the 60X here, you'll see that we have a knob to adjust the beam angle. This beam angle is very important. If you're filming say a wedding reception dance floor where you want to make sure the dance floor is lit but all the tables around it are still dark. That will keep grandma from complaining that your light is blinding her. Because not every dance floor is the same size, it's really important to have a light that has a wide range of beam angles that it can use. Both the Practolite and 60X can hit the same 15 degree tight beam angle, which I would only really recommend using when filming someone giving a toast at a reception. On the wide end is where they differ though. And this is an area where the Practolite has the upper hand with a very wide 75 degree angle. In comparison, the 60X only has a 45 degree angle, so it can't throw light nearly as widely as the Practolite. This would be a bigger deal if not for one thing that we discussed earlier. The 60X can get brighter than the Practolite, meaning that while it may not have as wide of a beam, you can move the 60X further back from the dance floor to make sure you hit the width that you need. And then you can turn up the brightness of the light to compensate for the distance. This should work well, but keep in mind that if you find yourself filming at a lot of smaller reception venues where you have to put your light right up next to the dance floor because the room isn't big enough for you to move the 60X back, in that case, the Practolite with its wider beam angle is the better choice. Now, knowing that the 60X is brighter than the Practolite is great, but that brightness isn't going to matter very much if its battery doesn't last long enough to use it. As I said earlier, the 60X can take a variety of power options, including Sony NPF batteries or any battery with a D-tap. The Practolite is just as versatile when it comes to power because it uses four pin XLR, meaning I can use the same V-mount battery with both my Practolite and the 60X, which is is great. For weddings, I prefer to use a 150 watt hour battery, which is large, but not nearly as large as V-mount batteries can get. Comparing battery life between these two cameras, I found that the 60X lasted for one hour and 47 minutes at maximum power with my 150 watt hour battery. In comparison though, at max power, my Practolite was able to last for a much longer five hours and 10 minutes. But do keep in mind that I found that the 60X at 60% power is at the same level of brightness as my Practolites at full power. When I ran the battery life test again with the 60X set to 60% brightness, it lasted for three hours and 23 minutes. Still not as good as the Practolite, but I want you to keep in mind that I rarely, if ever need to have either of these lights set to maximum brightness when filming a wedding. People aren't going to dance if it's too bright. When I film with my Practolite, I prefer to keep it dimmed down between 50 to 75% power so it isn't overwhelming the dance floor. All that said, if you end up going with the 60X over the Practolite, I would keep in mind that because the beam angle isn't as wide, you may have to keep it further away from the dance floor, which means that you may need to turn up the brightness a bit more to compensate, thus making the battery life shorter. Because of that, I would recommend either investing in a larger watt hour battery, say 200 watt hours, or purchasing two smaller batteries. Okay, we've talked about the 60X, all of its accessories and batteries. Now we need to talk about how do you transport all of this stuff? The case. Whereas my Practolite came in a box with no case, just the light and a set of barn doors, Aperture gives you a nice padded case with lots of room for storage of the light and all of its accessories. You have space for barn doors, the Sony battery plate, a Bowens mount adapter, and storage for power cords. There's even just enough room in the case to fit a V-mount battery or two, depending on the size of your batteries and how much you want to cram in the case. I realize this is just a case, but this is a huge step up over the Practolite, which didn't come with a case at all. Instead, I had to spend 129 bucks on a separate Pelican case to hold the light, accessories, and batteries. It's very impressive that Aperture was able to include this case, a light of this quality, and all of its accessories for the price that it did. And that's the last and arguably one of the most important things we need to talk about 
the price of this light. When I made my review of the Practolite a couple years ago, I said that it was my favorite light, but also that it definitely wasn't cheap. With the current retail price at the time of making this video of $1,095, it's quite an investment for most wedding filmmakers, especially filmmakers that are just getting started. But as I said at the start of this review, it has been exceedingly rare to find a compact light of this quality and feature set. This rarity has made the Practolite completely worth it, and I've greatly enjoyed filming weddings with it for the past couple of years. Then here comes Aperture with the 60X that matches or exceeds nearly every single feature of the Practolite. But most surprisingly, this light costs over 50% less than the Practolite at $419. So I guess it's time to update my lighting recommendation for wedding filmmakers. If the Practolite has been completely worth it at $1,000, it's a no-brainer to recommend the 60X at $419. And I plan on using this light for the foreseeable future at the weddings I film. With that, thank you so much for watching this review of the Aperture 60X. I'll be sure to link to it down in the video description. It would also be a huge help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you want to see more videos like it in the future. Also, have you joined my wedding filmmaking Facebook group yet? That's linked down below as well. Lastly, if you happen to be a wedding filmmaker like me, you probably want to book more couples and film more weddings. To help you out with that, I've created a free guide that's going to walk you through some practical steps that you can take right now in your business to book more couples and film more weddings. It's a completely free gift to you. You can get it at the link down in the video description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.